Yeah, first of all, I want to thank uh, Bobby Charlton, Sir Bobby Charlton, because uh, it's a great honor to uh, come in this stadium and to be guided by Sir Bobby Charlton. My first steps, okay, I, uh, my first steps were with uh, Bayern Munich, München and Barcelona, I know that, but as a trainer coach of Manchester United, these were my first steps and I was, I was very proud to do that with Sir Bobby Charlton. I uh, have the age to see him playing, so uh, I know what he uh, means for Manchester United, but also for the English football. And it was a great honour to do that with him. Thank you. OK, we will open questions to the floor. If you put your hand up, we'll bring a mic to you. If you could just introduce who you are, so your name and your own organisation. We are conducting the press conference in English today. Um, Leanne, if you could. Hi, Neil Custis from The Sun. Uh, welcome, Louis. Uh, what do you, what, how big an impact do you hope to make in your very first season with Manchester United? I do my utmost best. And uh, that's what I can give. I cannot give uh, uh, predictions, because you never know. It's uh, the biggest club of the world. Within two days, uh, I know already uh, how important Manchester United is, but how important also uh, the sponsors are. And uh, I have to work, I have to prepare a team, and I have to adapt uh, to this big club. It shall not be easy, but I do uh, my utmost best. And when you see uh, my career, you can see uh, what I have won. And that uh, I can say. And the future shall uh, show if I can do that again. Don McGuinness, Talk Sport. Louis, you've joined Manchester United. You talk about your pride and that this is the number one club in the world, so you feel it's bigger than Bayern, than Barca, than even managing the Dutch national side. And if that is the case, what do you expect to achieve in your time here? Uh, this is uh, the biggest club uh, because of uh, world known white. But in sport, you are never the biggest club because every season you have to prove. And last season, you were seventh. So then you are not the biggest club in sportive way. But uh, well known over the world, when I was in, in, in uh, China or now in Brazil, people are talking about Manchester United when I was the coach of the Dutch team. So, that's the difference. So it's uh, a lot of expectation also. But it's also a great challenge because of that. And therefore, I have chosen for this club. I work for Barcelona, in my opinion, number one in Spain. I have coached Ajax Amsterdam, number one in the Netherlands. And I have coached Bayern München, number one in Germany. And now I, I am in Manchester United, number one in England. And uh, I hope I shall fulfill the expectation, but it shall be difficult. Vinnie O'Connor from Sky Sports News. Louis, you've made two signings already this summer. How many more signings do you feel you need to bring in in order to improve this squad? Yeah, my, my uh, method is always uh, the same. I want to look at the player now, at the players present. And of course, I know the players, how they play. But I uh, don't know the players who I have trained and coached. So first, I want to see uh, surely the first three, four weeks, what they can do. And then maybe I shall uh, buy other players. And the players uh, that we have bought now, uh, Shaw and uh, Herrera, was already on the list. Uh, so I give my approval because I like them. 
But first, I want to see uh, the players performing uh, my uh, philosophy. Uh, Louis, uh, David McDonald from the Daily Mirror. You mentioned then you don't do predictions and you said it would be difficult. Uh, but how realistic is it for United fans to feel that they can be challenging for the title under you this season? Or do they have to be a bit more realistic going from seventh place? That's, that's always the question. And that's what I have explained already. Uh, hello, Simon Crabtree from Premier League Productions. Nice to meet you. Um, do you um, have you asked for, do you need any assurances of how long that you might need to, to get things back to winning ways? No, because uh, the owners and the CEO have uh, a lot of confidence in me. Uh, because of that, uh, uh, sh uh, they have come to me. And uh, I explained my philosophy and uh, they were excited. And because of that, I'm here. And uh, we have to wait and see if I can fulfill this expectation of uh, these people, but also of the supporters, because the supporters are very, the fans are very important. Also, I know that. But <laughs> you cannot predict. In, in, in the world of football, you cannot predict. Nobody uh, has have predicted that the Dutch team came so far. Nobody has predicted that Germany shall beat uh, Brazil in, in their home 1-7. And of sure, surely not that we beat them 0-3. So, you know that. Why do you ask? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mattel. Uh, this is uh, Ayan van der Ross from NOS. Um, OK. Hello. Um, when will you take a decision on the captaincy and is Robin van Persie a possible candidate? All the players are a possible candidate. I have to get know them. And therefore, I, I use uh, four, five, six weeks, uh, dependable if, if, if I'm out already uh, after four weeks. But it can be two months also. For me, uh, the captain's role is very important. And uh, therefore, I need time. And sometimes I uh, didn't have, have the time. Uh, then I have to uh, make quick decisions. But quick decisions are not always good. So. Uh, I use my time for it because I think a uh, captain of a team uh, from me is very, uh, very important. Mr. Van Gaal, uh, Ian Herbert from the Independent newspaper. At your, um, your former clubs, Ajax and Barcelona, you've had systems where the same brand of football is played throughout all ages and all levels of the club, and that's something you've introduced. Is that something you want to introduce to Manchester United? One philosophy throughout the entire club? Uh, the owners and also the CEO, uh, Ed Woodward, has uh, asked uh, to give advice. Uh, but uh, the main project is the first team. And the first team is more short-term than, than uh, the youth education. That's more long-term. So uh, more or less uh, the first year, maybe two years, we have to separate them. Uh, because now uh, I need all my uh, knowledge to, to uh, uh, transfer my philosophy in, uh, in, the, in this selection. So, so uh, you have to give me time uh, to do that. And uh, not only you, also the CEO and the owners. Uh, good afternoon. It's Stuart Matheson, Manchester Evening News. You obviously know the uh, importance of the class of 92 to the club and the fans. Have you decided yet the futures of Nicky Butts, Phil Neville and Paul Scholes? Um, uh, Nicky uh, Butt is already assisting us. Uh, uh, Paul Scholes, uh, we shall uh, find a, a, a role for him, but also for uh, Phil Neville, I, I believe. Uh, that's uh, what we want. Uh, but uh, it has, has uh, uh, it have to be also possible, and, and, and that we have to look. But uh, uh, we have also to adapt to the qualities of these persons. So it, it's it's not a, a, a easy job. We have to speak uh, about that with them personally, and uh, that's why uh, we have to wait and see. Uh, Louis Ian Payne from ITV News. 
Did you even consider taking a short holiday between the World Cup and coming here? <laughs> it's not allowed. <laughs> no, it is not allowed. It, uh, of course, it uh, was better that uh, I did a half year uh, uh, sabbatical, for example, that I come in January. But uh, I could not uh, let them go uh, when, when you have been asked by the biggest club of the world. That's a big challenge, a big ambition for me. Uh, I've already told uh, the number one of Spain, the number one of uh, Germany, the number one of the Netherlands. There is a fourth competition. In my eyes, the four strongest competitions in this world. There are a Dutch journalist. He's laughing now because uh, he was writing that the Dutch competition is nothing. I said, tactically, we are the best. And we have proved that. In, in, in Brazil. And, uh, yeah, what was the question? <laughs> Did you not want a holiday? <laughs> OK, the holiday, yeah. Uh, that, that I have already uh, given an answer to that, because when there is a challenge like that, I never let them go. Okay. And this is also a holiday for me. I like the, uh, the way uh, I, I, I can work. Louis, hello. Um, Andy Swiss, BBC News. Um, you have a reputation for being a, a very strong character, a strong personality. Um, for the fans and the players, can you give us an idea on how you would describe your style of management? I'm a, a democratic. Uh, I don't know uh, the word, but uh, emphasis. You... Emphasis? Emphasis. 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 Okay. Empathy. 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 Sorry. Empathetic. Empathetic. Yeah. Empathetic. To. Human being. Yeah. And uh, of course, I have a strong personality. But the other character characteristics are more important. And that's the key of my personality. Hi, Louis. Louis. Over there, sorry, boss. Hello. Louis? Oh, okay. Over there. Uh, Jamie Jackson from The Guardian. What would be success for you in your first season as a um, Manchester United manager? I don't know. Because uh, first, what I have already said, first I have to see how the players uh, perform my philosophy and how quick they can pick up this philosophy. And uh, then I can answer. But now uh, I uh, haven't worked with uh, most of them. So we have to wait and see, because it is very important that there is a click between the players and, and, and the manager. So. Is, to, is the top four finish, the Champions League finish, the minimum you would require from this group of players? It, for me, the challenge is always uh, first and not uh, force. But uh, when you uh, have to analyze after one season, it's dependable of the click between players and manager coach. Okay. Mr. van de IJsdorf from the Volkskrant. Um, how would you compare the Premier League? with La Liga and with the Bundesliga, where you have experience. How do you compare the Premier League to those competitions? Uh, I have uh, never worked in the Premier League, so it's, it's uh, because of that a big challenge that, that I want also. Uh, but I, I have worked in, in uh, uh, the Spanish League and also the German League. And in my time, in my time of Barcelona, at that time, I think uh, the Spanish League was the best league. And in my time uh, of Germany, I'm sorry, uh, in Germany, we were the best league. And maybe when I work here, the Premier League is the best <laughs> league. James. Hi, Louis. Uh, James Ducker from The Times uh, newspaper. Um, you described your style as uh, democratic, and a lot of the Dutch players at the World Cup were very um, complimentary about your man management. But you do have a reputation for being very autocratic. Is, is that reputation unfair? Unfair. Can it's, you explain why? Yeah, because of uh, the media wants uh, to show uh, that uh, 
part of uh, the personality. But that part of the personality is like this. But when you uh, repeat always that, then uh, everybody thinks like that. If you, but, were just autocrat but, if you were just autocratic, could you not have had the success that you have had in your career? No. I'm always the, the same person. When I, when I was uh, uh, 39, when I uh, began, because I was 37, uh, when I played uh, professional football, still. And then uh, I was assistant, so that I don't count. But from 39, I was head coach of Ajax Amsterdam. Until now, the personality is not, ha has not been changed. It's the same personality. But uh, uh, autocratic or uh, strong personality is not the same word. And more or less, a lot of people are thinking it's the same word. But it's not like that. I have a strong philosophy. And, and uh, every year I, I have trained, it, it, it is confirming that philosophy. Sir Alec has also a strong uh, philosophy. Sir Alec? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? OK. And it was always confirming that, because he won a lot of titles with uh, Manchester United. Then I think he has a very good philosophy. When you can do that, I hope I can do that. Or I can start with that philosophy. Uh, Louis, Richard Tanner at the Daily Express. Uh, just, you just mentioned Sir Alex. Have you had a chance to speak to him yet about the job? And also, are you daunted about no, following I... a man who yeah. had such a successful record here? Of course. I'm democratic, so. <laughs> no, no, he, he, he called me to congratulate me. And uh, we have spoken uh, about a cup of coffee to drink or to eat with each other. We were always invited uh, to uh, the elite form of the UEFA. And uh, we did always the light out with a glass of wine. So we know each other very well. And uh, I shall uh, drink coffee and drink wine with him. Maybe the better wine I can uh, imagine. Louis, there's, okay, there's, last two questions. Louis, there's huge excitement uh, among your Manchester United fans at your arrival. What's the one thing that excites you most about this challenge and this job that you're taking on? Yeah. It's, it's uh, difficult to uh, describe because I'm now two days here. Uh, I have met a lot of people. And uh, when you see that kind of people who are loving the club, it's a big family. And they ex expect a lot of me. They are very excited to, uh, to meet me. But uh, can I fulfill that expectation? I think I can do. But because of uh, the greatness of this club, uh, it's all also much more difficult than in another club. And also, uh, this club is also uh, guided in the uh, com commercial way. And, and we have to fulfill that also. And that is not always possible to fulfill the commercial uh, expectations or the football expectations. So that, that is my big challenge, I think, after two days. But maybe it shall be changing uh, after uh, the United States tour. I don't know, but I don't think so. <laughs> OK, last question. Uh, Louis Fraser Dayton from uh, Sky Sports. Given the number of players that left over the, the course of the summer, experienced players, how big a role do the remaining experienced players, like Wayne Rooney, for example, have to play in the team going forward? Yeah. <clears throat> you have to know that uh, I'm not always convinced of the experience of players. Because that I have said uh, a lot of times in the media, 
a boy like uh, Clarence Seedorf, he was 16 years old, I let him make uh, his d debut in, in, in the Ajax squad at that time. But with 16 years old, he was sometimes more experienced than a player of 30 years old. So it's always dependable of the personality. And you named uh, Rooney, but for example, Michael Carrick, he has injured uh, last uh, day or the day before that. So that's, in my opinion, also a big blow because he is an experienced player. So always it's very important that we have experienced player, but not only in age, not only in football experience, but also experience as a human being. Because uh, my philosophy is not only the football player, but in total. And then there are not so many experienced players. I'm sorry. <laughs>